I guess the I guess the pitch is getting shifted around a little bit too on this one, which is interesting. Sound design is a subject that separates amateurs from pros. If you've been making music for a while, you probably already know this, but sound design isn't just about tweaking knobs and adjusting faders. It's about creating the sound that's gonna take your listener into a new state of being. Whatever genre you're creating, hyper pop, heavy metal, trap, indie, sound design is what's gonna set the stage for everything to follow. Think about it, what captivates you when you're first listening to your favorite song? It's that crispy hi-hat line. It's the booming bass line that you hear. It's the drum tone, that ethereal synth pad guitar crazy combo. This is what captures your imagination. See, anyone can make music today with a splice account and basic taste in music. You can create an entire professional sounding track in no time, but it's a rare case when somebody is able to specifically craft each sound in their track specifically how they want it. It's not just about crafting a sound that works in your mix. It's about telling a story and evoking the emotions that you want your audience to hear as they're playing your track. So as we dive into this journey together, I want you to know that sound design is not just a technical skill, it's actually an art form. All right, let's jump right into Logic Pro here. I have Alchemy opened up. And before we even get to the technical side of making a sound in Logic, I want you to envision the sound that you're hoping to create right now. What our goal is here is to bring our vision to life. So to avoid getting lost in the weeds, I'm actually going to reference a track that I'm hoping to create a similar sound to. The track I'm going to be referencing is The Good Night by Instupendo. Specifically, the synths in this song are really magical ethereal sounding. My goal in this tutorial is to recreate that sound. All right, now we have our reference in mind. Our sound is envisioned. Let's dive into alchemy and mess with some settings in here. So first to reset this synth to its default settings, I'm gonna come over to the advanced tab and I'm gonna click file initialize preset. This reset alchemy to its default settings, which gives us a blank canvas that we're able to design our sound in. When I play it, you can hear it sounds very boring, very basic. This brings me to our first lesson in sound design, which is to choose your foundation wisely. If we come over here, we have a bunch of different sources, which are also called oscillators, which are going to make up the foundational sound of what we're designing. So right now we just have one oscillator activated, as you can see, and it's a saw. If I click on that, I have a lot of different waveforms I can choose from, some basic, complex. Really with this, this is gonna be a process of experimentation, learning which sound you like the best. I encourage you, if you're just starting out, keep it simple, keep it basic, and just select between one of these four as you're going. The specific sound that we heard in the reference track is a sine wave, and so when we play this, you can hear that has a much more calming sound and quality to it. The next setting we're gonna mess with is the AHDSR settings in here, which is attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release, which is how we can shape the dynamics of this specific sine wave. So if I turn up the release a little bit, you can see as I play the note, it has a more sustained ending. Maybe we'll have a softer attack. That's a much more gentle sound already, already sounding closer to our original reference. And the final setting that we're gonna mess with in the synth is the fine tuning. Fine tuning controls the intonation of our pitch. If I turn it down a little bit, you can hear my pitch goes slowly out of tune. This is a really key element in creating the sound I'm looking for because as we detune this synth, it tends to sound more dreamy to our ears, a lot more like the original reference. Next, I'm gonna create a melody using this sound. I just created this melody, here's what it sounds like. Let's lay down another melody on top of this. Here's the second and first melody that I just came up with played together. You can see just by selecting the right melodies, this is already sounding like our reference track and a lot closer to the sound I want. With the second melody, I'm going to actually 
adjust the fine tuning so that's different from our former melody. With these two melodies kind of out of tune, it'll sound a little bit more authentic. Next, I'm gonna use the same sound to create a sub bass. For our bass, we want that to be in tune, so I'm gonna reset the tuning, and then we'll actually want just one voice to this bass. We don't need to be playing chords in that low register. We'll keep our waveform a sine wave, and I'll adjust the release so that it's a little bit shorter. Finally, let's lay down one final melody. Now we have the bass line for our track. But this is only part one of sound design because we've only chosen what waveform we like, set the attack and release settings. The next step that's so key to this our effects as you can hear this is pretty dry but what i'm gonna do to affect all of our melodies at once is i'm gonna select them all and we're gonna send them into their own bus now that we have this bus we'll call it melody and we can affect all these synths as one i'm gonna add some stereo delay see what it sounds like Next, let's add some tape processing. I'm gonna come up here to my tape delay, turn off the delay effect, and just have the wet output. Turn up the modulation. Maybe the clip threshold. Get some nice distortion happening. Turn up the spread a little bit. There's one final effect I want to add just to one melody specifically, this high melody. And that effect is a phaser. So if I come over here, my amps and pedals, go to stomp boxes and find a phaser in here. Maybe this, uh, this roto phase. Let's see how that sounds. sounding good finally for our bass i really just want to add some distortion to this so let's add some clip distortion finally i want this track to sound like it's coming from far away like another room i'm going to go into our master output track which we've just created. We're gonna add some reverb to this. Go Space Designer. Look around for a reverb that we like. I'm actually gonna add a second reverb to this. I like the sound of the first one. Let's add one more. Finally, I want this sound to be very unified, so I'm gonna add compression after the reverb. Really, the sound effects that I'm setting up right now are unconventional mixing-wise, but we're not mixing the sound right now, we're designing it. So the way that you wanna think about using your plugins is not to mix, you're trying to achieve the original vision that you have in your head. And that's really the difference between sound design and mixing. I'm just gonna choose a preset that I like, analog tape. This high synth is kind of sounding annoying to me as I'm listening to this track over and over. First, I'm gonna transpose it an octave, which I'm not gonna play because that would be too high, that would damage our ears. I'm gonna bounce this in place, mute the other track. Now, with just the audio file, I'm gonna pitch that down. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe we'll pitch it down one more. Pitch it down one more and we'll bring it back up with our pitch shifter. Finally. 
finally add some vocal transformer to that to just adjust the format. Some of the dynamics are getting taken out of the track, so I'm going to add some OTT to this. And now you can hear we have a completely unique sound from what we've started with. And I guess the I guess the pitch is getting shifted around a little bit too on this one, which is interesting. Probably happens in the pitch shifter and vocal transformation, but that's some of the fun of sound design. You do get to mess around with things to achieve it, to get it sounding how you how you like. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, press the YouTube buttons down below. See you guys next week. Peace.